to welcome in now someone who has a very special point of view. He is Scott Strauss, former NYPD officer and as it turned out, a rescue worker on 9-11. Scott, if you would please, sir, take us back to this day for you 13 years ago. What exactly did you go through? Well, I just left the Lower Manhattan uh, as a member of the New York City Police Department's Emergency Service Unit. Uh, worked midnight shift, finished up at 8 o'clock that morning, was on my way home. I heard on a radio, on a news radio, that a tower it got struck by an airplane. When I got home, I yelled to my wife. My kids had just gone to school. I said the train, uh, plane had just struck one of the towers, turned TV on, and just minutes later, I saw the second plane hit. I knew we were under attack, I kissed my wife goodbye headed back into the city and mobilized with all the other off-duty officers from the New York City Police Department, certainly my unit that were coming in, and we headed downtown to Lower Manhattan to the Trade Center. Now, Scott, you know the events of 9-11 are always going to be a, part, a big part of the American psyche and, of course, right there for you as well. How do you deal with this every year on this anniversary? Do you attend the ceremonies? Is it getting easier for you? I think it's getting harder for me. Uh, I'm not sure of why. Um, this morning, like every 9-11 morning, I go back to where I used to work at the emergency service unit of the police department and we get about 40 or 50 guys together that were working that day and the guys that are working today and we have a nice breakfast, there's a ceremony that we have and then we go about our business for the rest of the day. Now you had mentioned you kissed your wife goodbye right before you left. What did you say to her when you came back from being at Ground Zero? How do you how do you put that into words? How do you explain it? Uh, I don't think I did. Uh, my wife and I and my kids, who are 22 and 19 now, uh, we haven't really spoken about it, even though it's 13 years later, of uh -huh. what they were doing and what I was doing. I came home for the first time at about 2 o'clock in the afternoon, 1 o'clock in the afternoon on September 12th, uh, only to see my kids and my wife when they came home from school, uh, gave them a hug, gave them a kiss, and I went back to work. The thin blue line called upon to take such actions, and it does affect those who are involved in these things. And Scott, with the three minutes we have remaining, obviously we know this is emotional. Correct me if I'm wrong. I understand you were credited with bringing out one of the last survivors, if not the last survivor, uh, taken out of the second tower. You can set me straight on that, but, but could you give us uh, exactly what you ended up doing on that day in terms of rescue? There was a whole team of New York City police officers from the emergency service unit that I worked with in that hall. There was officers Patty McGee, myself, it was a, uh, a former paramedic, Chuck Sarika. We were working on uh, police officer Will Jimeno from the Port Authority Police Department and his partner, Sergeant John McLaughlin from the Port Authority Police Department. They were buried deep in that pile since the first tower came down. We found, we got word that they were there at about 8 o'clock at night on September 11th. Uh, we went through an incredible rescue operation uh, to extract Will Jimeno and it took other rescuers another seven, eight hours to get to Sergeant McLaughlin. They were buried deep. Their wounds were so severe, we didn't think that they were going to survive the rescue attempt that we were implementing. There came a point where we were, um, they were readying us to cut his leg off, and he, Will was begging us to cut his leg off to get him out so we could get to the sergeant because he was blocking our way to get to the sergeant. Uh, thankfully, we didn't have to do that. Uh, but I didn't do it alone, I certainly didn't do it alone. I had a whole team of guys with us and um, we did it as a team. About a minute remains. Scott, you still stay in touch with Will Jimeno? You mentioned his name. Yeah, he's a great guy. He's uh, got a great family. He's got a love of life and he's a fantastic individual. And perhaps in the glad way- Glad I met him. Sorry, sorry it was there, but I'm glad I met him. Yeah, but you know this story and you talk about it, it, it was a time of incredible evil, but that evil was eclipsed by literally the greater good. You and those you worked alongside working for the greater good, and it, it has uh, eloquent testimony in the, uh, 
in the life of Will Jimeno. And, and you know, we only have 30 seconds, but yeah. most of us have seen the movie based on your experiences. How, how much does it capture it? Is it pretty right on? Yeah, pretty right on on my end of it, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And from what Will and John was saying, pretty right on on, what, on their end of it. Uh, there's a documentary being aired tonight on uh, one of the TV stations on rescue cops, and that's on my unit and the many officers that were working that day. Well, God that's bless right. them, Scott. God bless you for your service. We thank you for your time and your insights. Thank you, J.D. Thank you, Morgan. God thank bless you. you, Scott. America's Forum will continue right after this.